Traveling the Vortex. We've joined the Duke of Norfolk as he plots against Queen Elizabeth in episode number 278. I'm Keith. I'm Sean. I'm Glenn. How are you guys? Fine. <laughs> it was a short weekend. Mad with power. Plotting. We're recording uh, late this week because uh, Keith and I got called into work yesterday. So. Yeah. Boo work. Mm. Boo work. Was we don't normally we the, uh, work on Sunday, but craziness. Yeah, was the uh, we had a um, it made we had a shootout news. with uh, federal officers and a wanted, well, presumably wanted man at a hotel here or motel here in. Topeka. I suppose you should rephrase that to say there was a shootout, not we had a shootout. We were not well, involved. We, we weren't involved <laughs> we in the were shootout, no, but there was a shootout in Topeka. But by God, if I'm ever in a shootout, I'm burning a hotel down. And that's <laughs> <you're>, that's <laughs> yeah, but don't stay inside. No. Yeah, get, get out of the hotel or the there motel. Was, there was definitely a flaw in his plan. <laughs> Way to start the newscast or the podcast out with the uh, top worst news of the week. <laughs> well, everybody else is talking about it. In news tonight. Yeah, and, and some of our listeners may have actually heard it because, like you yeah. said, it's been national news. So. We're all fine. No, we were not involved. <laughs> Let's start with that. Although this particular event, at least for Sean and I, is not too far away yeah, from Yeah, it was us. the it's furthest away. I was probably, the furthest away. Yeah, which is not usually the case where you live. <laughs> yeah, <you're>, <laughs> <laughs> it was probably, what, 10 blocks maybe west or east of here? Yeah. 15 maybe total? Just over Probably a mile. 15, yeah. yeah. Probably a mile. From here, I slept right through it. Had no idea what was going on. Went home after Pinewood Derby. Actually, we went out to dinner and uh, well, my weekend was uh, <laughs> Pinewood Derby this weekend. That uh, was Pinewood Derby. Well, they did it a little different this year, and and uh, Mason ended up in the middle of the pack, so he was in the middle of the a whole group. The problem was he they did a they qualified for a rabbit class and a turtle class and he ended up at the bottom of the rabbit class so he was competing with some really uh, fast cars of, of people that are were have been doing it for years and so uh which i was really proud that we were able to get into the rabbit the class, class yeah, yeah uh this year so next year some tweaks and this year i was really happy with our um, design and our uh results and Did you win so, best design he won an award for uh, most representative of scouting, hey, which if he go. had not gone with the idea that he had, then he would not have gotten that. So that was total credit to him for having the, coming up with the concept for that. So it's cool, pretty exciting. Um, and then of course we got called in work yesterday. Uh, before that, luckily Keith, unfortunately, unfortunately, he had to miss out on this, but uh, he yielded to me since I I think He's because I was the reason. Well, and I was thinking it was because I was the reason that you got we were going to have the tickets anyway. I think. Oh but, yeah, that too. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he yielded to me because I'm the bigger bigger tricky. But uh, Sean and I got to take in the. Uh, Star Trek: The Ultimate Voyage um, live concert live event. concert event, which is uh, too if long you don't, of a title. If you don't know what this, <laughs> if you don't know what this is, it basically it's an orchestra that comes in and they play live uh, uh, music from the Star Trek films and television series, and there's a, a giant screen up behind them and they show clips and they play along with the if, if various anybody's seen clips. Doctor Who in the proms, it's pretty much very a Star similar. Trek version of yeah, that. Very very similar to that. So. Oh. That's what the problems is, Sean. I've only seen clips. I've never sat down and watched the full one. <laughs> How was it? It was amazing. It was really it good. Was, I, it was one of those things They're that... They're bringing a tears. The tickets were... Yeah, actually, yeah. there was a couple of times I got a little, <laughs> the Spock got a little emotional. Yeah. Oh, I could see that. Yeah. Thor- thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I, if I had nitpicks, and I have nitpicks, <laughs> I could have used a little bit more... Um, I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong, because you know they they would play these clips up on the on the on the screen, and the orchestra would be playing the music, and sometimes it would be directly associated with that particular clip. Yeah. And sometimes it wasn't. It was just something else that they had chosen to put these clips up to that particular thing. And um, I, I I felt that the clips, in some ways, were almost a little bit distracting to take away from the orchestra. But then again, maybe that was the intent, was to kind of keep reminding you, look, there's a live orchestra here playing. And there were times you're where just I drawn forgot. into it. There were times yeah. that I forgot that there was a live orchestra, and yeah. it would just occur to me, oh my gosh, the music of this is all completely live. <laughs> so, but no, it was, a, it, was a, it was a really good show, and I was sad that you and uh, Sarah yeah. couldn't make it, because I think you'd have had fun. I hope they filmed it. 
kind of like how they had for the Doctor Who Prime they, um, so that they would release it. My understanding from the, the woman at the uh, souvenir booth, there's a CD that it's this actual, the Czech National Orchestra, uh, it's a two to set performing that you can buy of the music of them doing it. They will not do oh. a DVD. And I don't know if it's because there's, it seems weird to me that it would be licensing because Paramount and CBS own all of it. But yeah. So how's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. coming? We are uh, two episodes away from finishing season two. Ooh. Been trucking. You're, yeah, you're really getting there. And uh, Mel did not like uh, Edward James Almost' character. <laughs> you're like, kind of not supposed to. Didn't like Mr. Gonzalez. You're not at first. Yeah. Eventually. Oh, I was like, hey, it's cool. he's kind of being a jerk. That's okay. It's still Edward James Almost. And then... Almost? <laughs> it's Edward James Almost. Almost. It was Edward James He, he was almost. almost Edward James. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, why isn't there a impersonator out there? You know. Why isn't there an impersonator out there that goes by almost Edward James? There should be. That may be the most genius piece of marketing I have ever heard. <laughs> if you look or sound like Edward James almost, contact us. We will be your agents. We will book you at cons <laughs> for a nominal fee, ten percent, and 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 we'll, we you, you will be Edward James almost. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing on uh, Clone Wars? I have uh, not proceeded any further. I'm sure I am you probably past me at this in point. In series five. Oh wow! Yeah, you're a whole season ahead. <laughs> yeah, of me now. and I, I think uh, I think I, did, I think I determined I've watched one episode of season five, maybe two. I can't remember for sure of season five. So I did a little catching up on Arrow this week, and uh, Twelve Monkeys came back for season two, and the finale or the premiere was pretty incredible. Was they already had their still. finale? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's a time travel show, so they could start with the finale and with the premiere. <laughs> Ooh. John, do you watch anything else? Um, I watched this stodgy movie about the Tudors that I didn't uh, quite understand. But right, well, <laughs> we're, we're going to get uh, that may be my review. So let's just not waste let's not waste the chance here. No, like well, so if we, that's going to do it for this week, until next week, <laughs> we, we we kind of blew through. Uh, uh, like I said, we've been watching a lot of Agents of Shield. Uh, well, and you guys were here last week when we were watching Age of Ultron. Yeah, and we we did finish that one up, and um, haven't started uh, Ant Man yet. New companion announced. Well, you're just going to jump right I'm into it. I'm just jumping huh? right in there. News: Pearl Mackey joining the show is Bill. I really like how they announced her. The video is a great way to introduce. We don't get to. We don't spend months wondering what her character is going to be like. We get a great introduction. And we, yeah. In that four-ish minute clip, I thought that it said everything I need to know about this character. And I love it. There were parts of it that made me wonder. I don't, this is, I'm not digging for conspiracies or random <laughs> theories, but the way it was shot almost felt like she's in his head. Because there were shots where they would show him, and you wouldn't see her over his shoulder, even though he's talking to her. I don't know, just the way I, the way it was shot just made me that that thought popped in my head. I'm laying that out there now in case it's yeah. Turns we out also to be true. thought Series Nine was going to be a dream. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Could still be. <laughs> Moffat's here for another year. I have, compl- I have completely <laughs> let go of that theory now. So. I sure hope so. Um, Boy, I'm going to come over this table in a year if that turns out to be going to beat you with your envelope. No, I'm just that's us, it out no, that's us, over, that's us <laughs> overthinking it. No, it probably it is. But Here I was all prepared to throw out the, I think she's from the 80s. <laughs> I think she is too. Oh, do, but do, made do up think, in Do you think that the Back to the Future reference is because it's now 2016 or because she's from the 80s? Maybe a little bit both. Maybe I mean, a little bit of both. The whole, the whole, a little tongue the whole cheek cl- well, because, the whole clip's a well, little, we got to jump ahead to the future. The whole clip is a little meta, is what it is. Yeah. And it, they, they do do it in-universe, but with skirting the edge of out of the out of the universe. And I think that that was cleverly done, especially for an announcement video. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think maybe you're on to something there. I think maybe it's both a reference to the fact that, you know, this is 20, well, that was 2015, though. That Oh, no. Was, they filmed this twenty. Yeah, so yeah, I think it was a little bit of the of, of a reference to both, but because they wouldn't, 
it's all it, it's an Edward James almost joke that doesn't work <laughs> yeah. in the show. Yeah, but as an announcement, small right. sub video piece, it, it's a, it's a joke that works. So. I really like the, all the questions she was asking and making fun of the Daleks, and her, I, I'm really enjoying her, her personality so far. Yeah, it's, I'm very excited. It's um, she's a, a little bit Donna esque, but a little less, um, a little more. How do I say this kindly? She doesn't have the rough edges. Yeah, she doesn't quite have the rough edges. I think she's she's very she's very witty. She's very clever. Donna near the end of her run. Yeah, perhaps yes. Which I've never seen her in anything. Before. Uh, she doesn't. I, I tried to look her up on Imdb, and if I found her page, she hasn't done it. Much. She was uh, on the Doctors, I guess, for a short period. Uh, maybe even just one episode. I can't remember for sure. She's done a lot of stage work. Yeah, and she's a graduate of the uh, London, uh, the big London theater uh, school. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. Kind of like our Juilliard's. It's a yeah. uh, London theater school. So. She must have some acting chops. This is her first major television role. She's done a lot of stage work, and in fact, if you've seen on social media, Peter Capaldi just recently went to go see her in a production to support her. You know, the whole cast took a picture with him, as you would. <laughs> as you would, <laughs> of course. She honestly, she kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Gabby from the comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, think I could so. see that. Just a vibe, yeah. not not necessarily, you know. And I like Gabby, so that's. That was, I mean, it's hard to make an impression off of you know a four minute video, but I'm 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 pretty jazzed and pretty excited, and I, I really hope that the '80s thing turns out to be a, a nice piece of the character, just to break the contemporary yeah. companion uh, role a little bit. I would agree. It's somebody from the past, and not the distant past, like Jamie or. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would have been from the past? Victoria. 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 Yeah. Most companions were either contemporary or future. Maybe maybe she's a future maybe. companion. Or from the future. Maybe she's from 2017. That's why they have to get back there. No, but he says back to the future. Maybe he's meaning that as a joke from whatever time frame they're in during that clip. Well, that's what the impression I got yeah. was that they're... But it, it, it said, I thought I said it said somewhere in her dossier that she's that the character's from the 80s. Mm, so no. I got the, oh, they, I got they, the they, impression that they were... Like further back, yeah, just between the hair and the Prince T-shirt, which turned I, into a weird. Oh yeah, reference this no week. kidding. Yeah, uh, um, I read somewhere, and I thought it was some from the BBC that this is this not, is not a, in their a initial from the press 80s. release. Okay, I don't know where I got. You must that have read thing. a speculation piece. Maybe from I something. did. I could have, but maybe they put the pieces together with the the hair and the jacket. Maybe the hair, the jacket, and the Prince shirt are just very yeah. retro, and she's. In yeah. the future, I don't know. It could be. But I, 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 I hope it's from the eighties. I think that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, what else we got? Welcome aboard, Pearl. We're looking forward to uh, a full season of fun. Yeah. And running, and <laughs> dodging. <laughs> They've got a plunger. <laughs> dodging Daleks with two plungers. Or she, well, she calls it a sucky thing, doesn't she? Or she called it a plunger. She, she called it a sucky, sucky thing. A sucker. Yeah. Sucker. That's what he called it. It's got a sucker. A it's got a gun. Two suckers that doesn't you know, it's have got a gun, a gun and a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do they say exterminate? Why don't they just say kill? <laughs> what does he say? Uh, uh, it takes them longer. Don't worry he about does, it. He does. Something, it's something that's like, Do we really want them to expedite? <laughs> yes, that's what it was. <laughs> we really want them to expedite. Good point. Oh, our next bit of news is Titan has announced their big summer comic event. We're getting another big crossover. This time looks like to be a true four doctor story. So on a scale of <laughs> one to ten, how excited are you uh, over this? Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Called the Supremacy of the Cybermen. Celebrating the fiftieth anniversary of the Cybermen. And if you're still there, would you get vintage stock to do some big Doctor Who event that week? Or weekend whenever it happens? When is this? I, I just felt so left out last year because nobody was doing anything around July there. 6th, just ahead you know, of we ought to July, do? Uh, Jul- July 9th is Doctor Who Comics Day. Yeah, you know, we ought to do. We ought to talk to Vintage Talk about coming in, setting up a table, and uh, having a live podcast that day. We should. We should do it at yeah. the library, and we should do a certain quiz show. Ooh. <laughs> Sponsored by Vintage Talk. Yeah. There we go. So you're uh, you're gonna break that news on air now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just said a certain quiz show. A certain quiz show. We don't know which. We quiz gotta show. tease our listeners. Yeah. 
Uh, the comic event is going to be Spoilers. five issue bi weekly, uh, written by George Mann, who Engines wrote Engines of War, of War right. and other comic lines for Titan so far. Uh, bi weekly meaning every other week? Uh, they did not specify, they just said bi weekly. <laughs> I would assume that's what it meant. Bi-weekly is every it's other week. Every other yes. week. Not two a week. That'd be... No. That would be two a week. <laughs> There's a word for that, though, isn't there? Uh, there do, might be, do, but do bi-weekly has always okay. meant every two weeks. Every two weeks. Okay. Bi-weekly, two weeks. Bi-monthly is every two months. That seems odd that you would do five issues bi-weekly. I don't know, Sean. Well, remember that they, maybe they want to keep it from having that issue... With the four doctors, where the one oh, was that's delayed. true. They had that delay in there, so maybe right. they're they're just factoring they, they in. They figured it out. This I don't year. know that we really figured out why that delay. Ever I don't happened. think so either. I think we presumed it had something to do with securing some rights with nine, but because he ended up showing up in that one. But. Well, no nine, no rights issues here because no, nine is all. in it. They got them all. Nine, but. ten, eleven, and twelve, including companions Gabby, Cindy. Spoilers. Who's Cindy? <laughs> I'm assuming that's the new 12th Doctor companion. Those who have been reading the 12th Doctor line would probably know this. Huh. Alice, Rose, and Captain Jack. So the description... Who's Cindy? <laughs> Sean, get the 12th Guess Doctor line, line on our Doctor <laughs> line on there. Apparently we need to do that before the event for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, exiled from Gallifrey at the very end of time, Rassilon, fallen leader of the Time Lords, has been captured by the last of the Cybermen. Now the Cybermen have access to time travel. With it, every defeat becomes a victory. Every foe is now dead or cyberized. Dun, dun, dun! Yeah! Already reviewing it, huh? I think I'm going to have to go pick up physical copies of each one of these. <laughs> and then the graphic novel fall. <laughs> it sounds cool. It does yeah. sound cool. It does sound really cool. I'm, I'm excited. excited. July cannot come soon enough. <laughs> Oh, some other news that I'm rather excited about. Big Finish have announced... More Big Finish news, because there's lots of stuff. Did you say that Big Finish have announced? Have announced, has announced. Did the, uh, <laughs> well, the Brits would have said Big Finish have announced. Yeah, see? Uh, it is Big Finish have announced. Has. Big Finish is a single entity, but in the UK, because it's a company, it's uh, plural. Here in the United States, it's singular. Big Finish. They announced their plans for the third volume of Unit. Trust me, I write. Sounds living. weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Silenced. Can you guess what they're going up against? No. The Silence? Because <laughs> I'm almost done with the Stone Rose, and a certain villain has not showed up yet. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my expectations and my expectations and we're way over there <laughs> so just throwing that out there i don't read anything at face value anymore <laughs> <laughs> yes kate stewart and team are going to come up against the silence they are returning and they will rise rise of the silence nope just silenced that's silenced. what it's called silenced <laughs> silenced um and it comes out May, nope, sorry, wrong, wrong one. January thirty first, twenty seventeen. Of course, this is after shutdown, which will be released June twenty sixteen, and a fourth one that will be released May, released May twenty seventeen. Holy shankies, we're getting. <laughs> That's after extinction had already come out. <laughs> so this is the this is the third. We're talking about the third volume of the four volume box sets. Or fall, fourth box, four box sets. So extinction, one in June. Shut down, silenced. Then silenced. Then and then one in May. One in May. The following after that. Yeah, May twenty seventeen. Uh, okay. I'm with you. So they're planning ahead, but I'm looking forward to it because I listened to Extinction and it was really well done. So. So the headless monks are in this, right? Yes. Cool. And our last bit of news. <laughs> Uh, one of our local cons has added a Doctor Who guest to its added roster of Who get guests. Uh, Smallville Comic Con has added Kevin McNally to their lineup. Who's in, Kevin McNally? In addition Keith? to Eric Roberts. Kevin McNally was in Glenn's favorite 
Doctor Who story of all time, a twin dilemma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he played Hugo Lang uh, in that. Those who haven't seen that or might not might wonder why uh, Marvel Comic Con got him because surely that's not the only reason why they got him. <laughs> Uh, it's not? It's not, what? surprisingly. Uh, he was Mr. Gibbs from Pirates of the Caribbean. And he's been in a number of, number of other things, including the... He seven- will be signing a Hugo Lang, uh, Lang uh, picture for me, I'll have you know. Really? Oh, yeah. Hands down. Twin dilemma, huh? Hands down. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. No, hey, Hugo was the best part of that. <laughs> Here's the I sad thing: I disagree is, with that. <laughs> before June, I will have to now go back and rewatch <laughs> the Twin Dilemma. Yeah, I might have to put that Again. on the schedule instead of the movie. Oh dear! Ahead of Smallville. Yes, I've yeah, done the movie, so yeah, that's not happening. Yeah. Well, maybe we could do the movie end. No. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think we all know the movie well enough. We don't need to rewatch that the one. Movie, as much guys. as I love the movie, it's I have I movie. have regulated the movie to the back burner. We get it once a year. That's all I'm putting it on the schedule. <laughs> I do well, remember a certain year where we did it four times in the same year. It wasn't quite that bad, but it was close. <laughs> okay, it was three. We're, it but, definitely was three. B- believe it or not, well, believe it or not, in the we, we've been on how long we've we been doing this now? Five years. Yeah. Yep. In the five years we've been doing this, we have watched Doctor Who the movie for Friday Night Who five times. So it's averaged <laughs> out. <laughs> averaged averaged out to one a year. <laughs> Once a year. So All what right. year did we not do it? Well, this last one, we took a, a break for... Oh. We didn't do Do- Doctor Who the movie for well, the Paul McGann? We, we may have done it in June. Yeah, I, think, I think we did it... No. Well... Yeah, but that was... Uh, that was this year. That was last oh, year. Oh, this year, not last year. Yeah. We had to have done we did it for 2016. Yeah. We didn't I could pull up the specs. I don't have them right in front of me, but there, there, there was a gap. So, so it must I, have been 2015. I we didn't purposely do it held off on it, and there was we we we, we got a break. Yeah, but now we determine how we need to do it the next time with the commentary. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we'll find new ways to and watch then the Friday. info text, and then <laughs> there will endless possibilities. I didn't think with, about there being info text on that one. I, I wish I would have thought of doing the commentary the last time we watched yeah. it. <laughs> Did you guys hear what he said? Because <laughs> Brittany did that several times for a lot of ones she had seen very frequently of doing commentary. Oh, maybe I just I can't can... quite bring myself. Uh, Doctor Who's the movie's the only we... one I'm going to be able to do that with. Can we do the commentary on uh, Twin Dilemma when we do that in June? <laughs> <laughs> I might make make it more bearable. You, you'll come away with it like Keith came away from Ghost Like, going, this is the greatest <laughs> thing ever, and I didn't know it. <laughs> See, it's genius. And I told you the reason I bought the DVD was because it's got the Eighth Doctor uh, comic you, you, uh, retrospective you, on it. The Eighth the Doctor, only, or not the Eighth? You doctor, bought it because, like me, doctor you're complete. Yeah, you're gonna, gonna own all, all of them at you're some right. point. You're right. I already own the two, the two episodes or two stories that I think are absolute stinkers: Twin Dilemma and the Idiot's Lantern. <laughs> And fear her. Well, yeah, yeah. I, and I think I, I'm not as down on fear her as you guys are, but yeah, it's it's all, it is down there at the bottom of the list. But I don't make lists, so. <laughs> <laughs> if there were a list, it would be down at the bottom of it. That, that's what that's what that's what we should do for an episode. We should do the traveling the vortex ranks the episodes if traveling the vortex ranked episodes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be two hours of Marvel Universe talk. <laughs> Oh, that's it for news this week. It'll be announcement on Monday, like normally when we. <laughs> I, uh, well, Monday's already happened. So. <laughs> It'll be a Tuesday now. <laughs> It'll be a Tuesday news announcement. Come out, the news since, will come you know, out. That's always we're out, just, how it we're goes. Just that cutting edge. We are so far ahead of the curve. We have to be a week behind. <laughs> All right. What do we got in feedback? Feedback. Ben sent us some feedback. Hey. Uh, from some last minute feedback. Yeah. He got a reprieve because uh, we didn't record until late. He says, "Hey guys, I've got a few things for you. Hopefully, I don't bore I don't bore you too much. First, finally found a Sarah Jane Funko Pop figure. Hooray! My copy of Havoc Files arrived today. Hooray! Maybe that means mine's coming soon. Maybe. One thing with that, though, if you search it by ISBN on Goodreads, it comes up with the the wrong book. Oh, great! Search it by title instead. Staying in the book world, I see that Aramem the Last Pharaoh is still on top in this book's." This month's book poll. 
Hey, that should segue us back into another piece yeah. of news here in a moment. <laughs> another book club member has raised concern about how to obtain it. It is available on Amazon Kindle for six ninety nine, and it is available physically uh, at bookdepository.com for about $10 with free worldwide shipping. Give it about a week or so to arrive. So, segueing real quick in the middle of his, <laughs> his feedback. Yes, the new poll is up for the book, Goodreads book club. And actually, I just looked at it, and it's... The Airman book is tied for first. <gasps> so <laughs> we need a we need somebody to swoop in there and have a deciding vote. So vote early, vote often. <laughs> <laughs> uh Ben continues. Uh What's it tied with, Keith? I'm trying to pull that up right now. It is tied with the twelfth Doctor book. <laughs> I believe it's the second one in the Glamour Chronicles. It's, I'm still pulling it up. Uh, blood, uh, royal blood. Royal blood. Yes. Look at that mine like a steel trap. Other Reached options. Reached out of the ether and grabbed that you title. Can do the Eleventh Doctor book, the Dalek Generation, or the Tenth Doctor book, the Prisoner of the Daleks. Those are your good no, reads. I have a book free club. Dalek story. <laughs> <laughs> Big surprise there. Yeah. We, know, we, we know what Glenn voted for. <laughs> no, you don't, because there were two on there. <laughs> I imagine you put your cursor kind of right in the middle. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Close my eyes. Uh, ben continues, continuing the book world, I've read the first issue of the fourth Doctor Titan comic. It was really good. I'm hoping to get issue two soon. Last I check it, checked, it hadn't come out yet. Finally, I tagged you three in a Facebook post from Funko Pop. They're giving away a set of four Flash Gordon figures. Whether I win these or not, I must obtain them. I hope this finds you well. Take care. Take care. Take care, guys. Ben. Yes, and if you haven't seen them, the Funko Pops are quite amazing. And, um, Ben, you, you, you endangered my life. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I normally don't do this, but I happen to be... In the car. Don't admit that on the air. I was at a stoplight, <laughs> and my phone chirped. And so I picked it up to see what it was. And it was Flash Gordon Popfickers! And just as he did, the light turned green. <laughs> and people behind him going, honk, honk, honk. No, I had a conniption in the middle of the car. <laughs> so I'd like to apologize to that old lady. <laughs> we thought Sean was having a, another stroke. <laughs> or a seizure. Yeah. <laughs> Probably a seizure. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm so excited over these. I, uh, You're so, not. Somebody, I'm po- no, no, so no. Excited somebody over pointed these. them out to me. Well, Ben had a week ago. Was ben it Ben had, had, it had ben. them on his Facebook, and I tagged you both in them that's because I saw. That's what it was. Them. And, uh, and, and I, I think that was my response was, that "Well, was the that's just yeah, that it." Is that I was, was like, "Oh, cool." Yeah. But it wasn't a real thing yeah. at that point. It was well, just like, because I've seen pop figures that don't really exist. You my know, response was, "It was probably inevitable," because I mean, if you look at Funko Pop, they're doing. Everything. I mean, anything that's... You just pointed out the Willy Wonka ones to me a few weeks back that I didn't know existed. I mean, they're doing anything and everything that has, I mean, they're a, doing has a fandom. Or are they doing Friends ones, yeah. too? Yeah. So anything they're that's kind out. of fandom they're doing, so... But this is Flash Gordon Glenn. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think they're cool. Now I can I, if have I collected, Flash If I collected Funko Flash. Pop, I would probably be more excited about them, but I just, I don't I don't collect thing. Funko Pop. <laughs> well, you, collect, you selectively. <laughs> yeah, you uh, selectively collect. You and I both selectively collect Funko Pop. I, I'm up to 15. I, you I are a collector if you were up to 15. <laughs> up to, well, you're not a completionist, but you're a collector. Considering the scale, it's still a small... You're a collector. If you hit the 15 <laughs> mark, you are a collector. I'm going to have to go home and count ours now. Do I count the ones that are that Sarah obtained? Yes. Yeah. All right. I included the ones Mel grabbed. I, I, I didn't necessarily Keith, want the penguin one. it's called one. marriage. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm on the fence on Clytus. Clytus, oh, Clytus is cool. On the fence. If I got one of them, I would have to get all of them. <laughs> I'm on the fence of this one. I got three uh, out of I the did, four. I, or, as much as I it? love Firefly, I haven't collected all. Is the, it five of the four. six? Oh, there's four. There's okay, four. so three of the four. There's Flash Could and, and Voltan. <laughs> <laughs> we will be able to reenact. I am. We well, have to at least get Voltan. Now that you pointed that out, I am a little more excited that there's a Voltan figure. <laughs> so that we when dibs we, for birthday. Okay. <laughs> just. just just so that I can say, <laughs> got 
die! And <laughs> so the, the, there's a Flash and a Volten and a Ming and Clytus. So it's a balance set, too. Oh, when are they going to do Flash Gordon live? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. They just have to play the score from the entire movie. <laughs> I don't know that I could go to that. I would sing along with the orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be running up and down the aisles. Da, 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 with my bolt. <laughs> Die! <laughs> it's time to watch that movie again. <laughs> I was just thinking that. Gordon's oh, alive! And immortalized in plastic. <laughs> Where's Dale? Where's Dale? That's, yeah, there's that's no, my no, new yeah. hashtag. That's that's where's, hashtag. Dale? where's Dale? Where's Dale? Disappointed with you, Funko Pop. Don't be like that. And Baron. Well, I was and, looking and for the female representation here, but sure, where's Baron? <laughs> or, or, or Aura. <laughs> or Aura. Aura, yeah. Fail. Now, I've, now I've, I've reversed my decision on it. I'm not excited anymore. <laughs> 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 oh, I'll still watch the movie. <laughs> All right, back to Ben's email. <laughs> where's, where's, the, where's the airline pilot and his kid, Buzz? <laughs> oh, wait, you were finished. I was finished. But if you want to send us feedback, you can. Uh, feedback at TrevorInTheVortex.com or on the tab on our website, TrevorInTheVortex.com. Let us know what you think of Bill, the new companion. Or these Funko Pop or, uh, or anything. Yeah. Obviously, we're willing to talk about pretty much whatever you want. <laughs> Where you're at in the MCU, um, <laughs> your predictions for who's Ray's father. Um, <laughs> Get your, your tickets for the, the what's the word? I don't know. I reached that one name out of the ether, and now this one's going to escape me. Um, <laughs> You only get one name the, out of the ether a night, Sean. I'm sorry. You've met your ether quota. The, rating, uh, the, the, the odds making. The ether has what moved. What is it called? Oh, never mind. <laughs> get your bets in. Sean's brain has failed him. The ether has disappeared. Place your bets, I think maybe was the phrase I was going for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can also find us on uh, Twitter, at Travel Vortex, and then Facebook, uh, Traveling the Vortex. You can reach out to us any of those locations. And, of course, as we mentioned, don't forget the Goodreads Book Club. Go vote in the poll. Shall we move on to our review of... Do we have to? <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> Before the Golden Age, Elizabeth was a passionate and naive girl who came to reign over a land divided by bloody turmoil. Amidst palace intrigues and attempted assassinations, the young queen is forced to become a cunning strategist while weighing the counsel of her mysterious advisors, thwarting her devious rivals, and denying her own desires for the good of her country. I don't think I can cue the horn up fast enough. <laughs> I don't know if it's that dun, bad. Dun. Only thing, well, the only thing good about this movie was a couple of the performances. That was it. Really? Yeah, it's 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 very convoluted. It's confusing. It, many it's many of many of the performances were very two dimensional. There's far too many characters with great actors doing very little, and it felt like an ambitious story that the writer could not piece together coherently. It it really does expect you to. No, <laughs> what's happening? It expect it, it doesn't go in with expecting your audience to not have knowledge of the time period or what's going on, and that's the movie's biggest downfall. If I didn't have Sarah sitting next to me bouncing off, okay, this is what's going on, right? I probably would have been thoroughly confused throughout the entire. The sad time. thing is, I'm familiar enough with the era that I still felt like it was just. It felt like chunks were missing. It was like. We have to do this all in two hours, so let's cover <laughs> and, and get twenty years of, of story, and yeah, exactly, and condense it down to you know two years and do it in two hours. And it was just, it was, yeah. No, I, I'm, I can't, I, I can't say much more about it because I just don't have anything good to say about it. it. I was very disappointed. I was pleased with Kate Blanchett's performance. She does a good job. I was somewhat pleased with uh, Joseph Fine's performance. 
he's the one that kind of took me out of it just based off his look. And I thoroughly enjoyed Jeffrey Rush's performance. Everybody else was just he's kind of everything. meh. Yeah. Well, I, I thought Richard everybody else was just did a good job. meh. Richard Attenborough's character was two-dimensional. He kept saying the same thing. He kept pushing the same things. And I understand that was the motivation of his character, but it was just the same thing over and over, and it was in the same tone and the same <laughs> inflection. And it, Even even Christopher Eccleston's character was, and, and not to the fault of the actors, don't get me wrong, because there are a lot of solid, phenomenal actors in this. The problem is the material was so lame, and the characters that were written were so two-dimensional. There was there was nothing. I felt no joy or remorse when the Baron finally gets his comeuppings. I got no. I mean, it was just it was a one-act character the whole through the whole thing. Not to Christopher Eccleston's fault because it was interesting to see him in a different portrayal than the Doctor and something that t- you know he did before he was cast as the Doctor. Yeah. Um, but it's just it, it was the. I think the most amusing character was the French nephew of the of the warrior <laughs> queen that was courting her. Dugangenou. Yeah, and it just that was the most enjoyable, just because he was so crazy and and nuts and and flamboyant and well, yeah, like to cross dress. <laughs> it was just that uh, character, by the way, pretty much sums up everything I feel about trying to learn French. <laughs> <laughs> When people ask me why is it difficult, I'm just going to point to him. <laughs> <laughs> had you gone to class in a dress, you think you would have done better? Maybe. Or if your instructor had been in a dress? Maybe. Well, she probably well, was. She, she wore dresses. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Male instructor in a dress? <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble. Stop. <laughs> Stop now. Um, okay, I liked it. I didn't like it like a lot. It, um, it, it wasn't a fun film by any means. It's a very it, it was not a fun romp. <laughs> no. it, was, it was not Dracula. <laughs> I didn't, but I didn't go into it expecting it to have fun. I expected no, it to be a, a heavy bow, brow beater historical piece that you kind of Oscar bait yeah, type it, of movie. It, it did get Oscar nominations, and in fact, I think it won BAFTAs over the UK. For, yeah, for uh, performances. Well, I, and Kate, Kate won a, bla- a BAFTA. Well, the film won, it won an film, Academy maybe. Award for. Costumes. Hair and makeup. No, I think it was costumes, wasn't it? I'm, was it hair and makeup? I'm it might have sure been it was best makeup. makeup. Okay. And then it won uh, a BAFTA for best English film. Yeah. And it won a uh, Golden Globe for best. Yeah, and Kate, Kate, she, won she Kate got a did get the Golden, Golden Globe. Globe for that. Yeah. Which I, I think, like I said, I think I of. <laughs> I just I'm gonna be repeating myself to say that I think Kate Blanchett did a fantastic job. That was it. <laughs> and Jeffrey Ruff, Rush was. Really well, good. wasn't it kind of a huge. No, I don't want to say controversy, but a huge upset that Shakespeare in Love won out instead of this movie. Was that that same year? That was the same year. No, the upset and was would that have been Saving, Saving Private, Private Ryan, Ryan did not win. Oh, yeah. okay. That was the, the huge one. The, uh, yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, I love Shakespeare in Love, but I walked out of Shakespeare in Love going, that was the second best film I've seen this year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen Shakespeare in Love, so. Oh, it's phenomenal. Um, you'd enjoy it. It's quite an enjoyable film. It really is. Much less convoluted than this. Of of the two films that Joseph Fiennes did that year, (laughs) that performance was phenomenal. Didn't take you out of the... And Jeffrey Rush is in it, too. Yeah. (laughs) And Queen Queen Elizabeth's in it, but not played by Kate Blanchett, played by um, Dame Um, Judi Dench, who did win an Oscar for that performance of Queen Elizabeth. She won Best Supporting Actors for that. (laughs) The, the odds makers had to be excited. Somebody playing the queen is going to win an award <laughs> this year. We pretty much have this as locked uh, down as well, we can I think get. I said Elizabeth II. Elizabeth I is who this is. So. Yeah, well, that was the fun part is I had to tell Mel. Okay, so this is the one the doctor marries a little bit later. She goes, oh, okay. <laughs> That's how we set it up. Yeah. I wish Sarah had been here. <laughs> because Mel kept asking me questions, and it's like, I don't know. <laughs> she, so is this her, well, is this her is this her sister that she's mad at or her mom and, and i'm like honestly sister. sister if it weren't for but then the dad the marrying conspiracy i would have been even more lost yeah <laughs> I, I kept thinking that i, I did <laughs> sit there and watch that, that going well i guess we've got a primer for this one <laughs> <laughs> I, I at least have some knowledge of what's going on because of that yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I enjoyed the movie, but I didn't... The I, gal that played Queen Mary, I thought was good. I, I really enjoyed... I, I should step back and say I did enjoy her performance. 
Um, the guy that played the King of Spain, he looked very <laughs> uninterested. <laughs> so he did a good job, too. But <laughs> and Sir John Gilgood. Yeah, John Gilgood was Being funny. Sir John Gilgood. <laughs> It's it's amazing how many people were in this film that later that that I recognized later in life. Well, like um, this really was in, in like early, Daniel Craig. Well, yeah, yeah, Daniel Craig is a great example. <laughs> yeah, so James Bond goes to try to kill the queen, and <laughs> the doctor is a bad guy, and James Frain is in it. Barbosa is a good guy. <laughs> Did anybody else? But he's just as conniving as Barbosa is. <laughs> anybody else have just a moment of, 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 of titillation when James Bond and the Doctor were on the beach together? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I thought to my... I, I this is I the coolest the, thing that could have happened in I, this I, movie. I said to Sarah, in the, in the one time when the Doctor met Bond. <laughs> I really did find myself going, hey, there's James Bond. <laughs> hey, there's Alan William Shakespeare. Was even in this. <laughs> hey, there's the Doctor. <laughs> Theon Greyjoy was even in this film. Oh, I missed him. I did too. He was somebody's son. <laughs> okay. Huh. He must have been quite young. <laughs> yeah. He, did you Did you guys recognize uh, James Frank? Was Was Who's he James the Frank? kid that turns in the... He's, he's or the, doesn't, he the doesn't big, turn him in. He's the haired guy. Oh, he was? Okay, I thought he was the kid because the, the it was Spanish the, dude. the daughter. Oh! You guys know who he is as an actor, though, right? James Frank or... James Frank, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um... Sean, let me find somebody... Something he's been in. I probably do know him. Uh, he was in Tron not. Legacy. He was in Lone Ranger. He was uh, in Orphan Black. So I've definitely Agent seen Carter, him somewhere. You've seen him everywhere. Okay. Yeah, he he's almost becoming that Mark Shepard type actor. Okay, at he's least the, for me, anyways. He's, he's the next Mark Shepard. He was in the Cape. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> um. I say I, I I think honestly I enjoyed the movie, but I can I can also say that for any of the things that I didn't enjoy, and and there were a lot, which because I was confused through most of it. But I chalk that up to my own failings for not knowing this particular period of English history, as well as maybe, well, I needed to for this film at least. I'm maybe sorry. not as well as I should have. If but. I'm watching a film, whether it's loosely based or whether it's based on actual facts, the film needs to be able to... Con- it should con- hold a hand a little it bit. It needs to be able to convey a story cohesively throughout from beginning from point A to point B and I think this one failed to do so I think that if a film is good enough in its storytelling you should be able to get everything you need to know about the story from the story without going into it knowing any backstory I agree when I go watch Tombstone I don't expect anybody that watches it to have as much knowledge about the OK Corral as I do but I expect anybody that goes to see Tombstone to know exactly what's happening from point A to point B. And that's really loosely based on the story of Wyatt Earp. So I, I'm sorry. I, and, and, and I think Tombstone does a good job of telling a story without it being confusing. Now, granted, it's, actually it's only more over, accurate than it's people give it only credit over, for. Well, <laughs> yeah. if you took it and Kevin Costner's Wyatt Earp and you put pieces together, you'd have a pretty dang accurate story. You, you, the, you watch the Wyatt Earp up until they get to Tombstone, <laughs> and then you take it out and you put <laughs> in Tombstone, <laughs> and you're good. Uh, yeah, the, the Cowboys are represented a little different, but yes. Well, it, it, it's a pretty good. I, I found Lincoln kind of the same way, like. I felt like they didn't... I went into Lincoln knowing very little about that era of his presidency and got everything out of it that I really See, I felt yeah. kind yeah, of I, confused through a lot of it. I, well, then I think that movie failed on, on a certain level, too, if it didn't connect with you. I just... Yeah. I, so no, I, I, I think... Didn't chop down a cherry tree. No. If, if oh, well, I'm required... If either. I'm required to come to... If I'm required to come to a form of entertainment with already some pre-knowledge of the, of the material... Then the the movie has failed, and that's what oh, happened. Well, and we, I knew. I, I, I agree. With I, that's I am no. I am no that. historian as far as that era of English. I mean, we've we've got a terrible track record with our English <laughs> history. But I am familiar enough with that era and what transpired that I should not have been as confused as I was. It just. But is that is that is that? Because Part of that was me thinking, "Oh, this is wrong. This isn't correct. <laughs> this is out of order." But yeah. <laughs> Is that because, I mean, did we do the film, a, I, I agree with you, don't get me wrong, but did we maybe do this film a disservice just because we weren't 
as up for it because we we, we just got well, done. I was up for it. We just got I done was excited to watch this. Yeah, so was like I. you know, how many of us are going through doing Marvel rewatches, planning for Civil War? So if it's something that's important to us, we do the legwork, we do the research. Well, so is is that we maybe. Like I said, I agree with you. I'm not but, disputing but the fact that that's the film apples needs to oranges to because the reason you're but. going back and you're wa- rewatching is so that you catch those clever little nods, and just so it's fresh in your mind yeah. more than anything and, else. And it's 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 not going to read a dissertation because I think so you, you understand the film. You could go <laughs> you could go watch any of the Marvel films without having previously seen it recently and still or even completely ha- enjoy it. And not get, even get, seen and still get, previous films. Well, but and still or get Star the little Wars or any of them. Yeah, that, any you know, of them. We do it because we enjoy the story so much and want to be refreshed on the little things. I don't think that you need a refresher on English history in order to enjoy this film. You shouldn't have to. And like I said, I went into it knowing the basic outline of what happened, and I thought they they somewhat adhered to that. But it was just it was they there there felt like there were little tiny gaps of information that were missing in order to tie a lot of the scenes and elements like together. why was uh, i can't remember his name was was whistling uh, jeffrey rush's character yeah. why was he exiled to begin with well now, he yeah. was exiled we, because he was uh they i got this from the film that he was one of the uh uh he was one of the people in of the protestant uh uh yeah, I, thought I got, I got, that, and he he yeah. was he was pushed out by the Catholics. He was pushed out by the Catholics. The interesting thing about this is, and I remember this being a the Catholic Church being up in arms over this film because of the way it portrays the Catholic Church and because of the way that it portrays the Pope. And I remember there being a lot of controversy. In fact, a, a, a big influential Catholic group actually did some boycotts of this film and spoke out against it because of its portrayal of of Catholicism. And I always, I'm not a religious man, but I always kind of thought, ah, you probably just being a little sensitive. But then watching this, I saw, <laughs> and I thought, eh, I can kind of see their point here. But I think, but I've got to wonder how accurate it was. Well, too. Yeah, who knows? If and it, it but was, the thing is, when accurate, you're when you're when you're going to tell a story like that, though, you have to you have, have to, a villain. Yeah. And the villain in this story is not one individual; it's the Catholic Church. And so I kind of could see their point, but no, much like Braveheart, kind of. Took certain liberties with William Wallace's William Wallace's character, character yeah. and the. Yeah. the, the well, King they all do. The they all do. If you're going to make an villain. entertaining film, you have to take a lot of creative license. Because if we just put history on film, for the most part, a good chunk of it's going to be pretty dang boring. Yeah. Because it doesn't play out with the same uh, romance and drama and poetic, you know, licenses that that we do get in film. So we have to completely accept that. The problem that I have with this is it's almost like the director was going for such a style. In fact, it feels like he was going for a Romeo and Juliet, uh, Baz Luhrmann's Ju- Romeo and Juliet style to the film by giving it more of a visual and poetic reference as opposed to a coherent story. And I think that's why it falls down for me is because it, it was like we were going, we were relying mostly on the performances and the visualizations and not the continuing story thread that should be there. And I think that's why I didn't like it as much. If they could have put as much drama and poetry in it as they did visual poetry into it and have that cohesive story, I think it could have been a really good film. But it's almost like we focused on the wrong areas too heavily and let the plot slip through the through the cracks in the meantime. So it's a Queen Elizabeth story for Queen Elizabeth fans. Maybe, maybe that's a that that might be a way to to put it. I could see that. Like you have to already be you know knowledgeable. Of the, what did Sarah think? She liked it. She enjoyed. It. She had but seen she, it before. But, she, oh, but she's also big into the Tudors. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she's so really she, steeped in. Yeah. I did some investment. reading. Let me uh, and I will mention for anybody that are fans of historicals. The prequel or the prequel, the sequel to this, the Elizabeth the Golden Age, yeah, that just came out ten years ago, is plays very fast and loose with the story. In fact, oh, this one is is <laughs> this one's dead on accurate compared to what's going to come <laughs> later. From what I've been oh, that's reading, kind of disappointing because I was kind of interested yeah, to because, see uh, I'm interested in watching the sequel. Okay, good. They, I'm they, not the only one. they from what I read, they insert. Uh, Sir Francis Bacon into the role of the uh, well Joseph Fine's role, and Joseph Fine's role is completely sidelined in the next film, and they bring Francis Bacon in, and he had nothing to do with uh, some of the elements that happen. 
Uh, they also talk about a lot of ships that are lost in the Spanish Armada. To the Spanish Armada, no ships were lost to the Spanish Armada in the actual historical account. So, uh, hmm. anybody, just a, a forewarning to anybody that hasn't seen the next one, take that one completely with a. This is just uh, this is a lot of poetic, lot of creative license. What is a different team one. behind it? It's the same dire- uh, writer. Well, I think it's even the same director. Uh, hold on, I think so. I think it's a, it's co-written. It's the same queen. It, it's the it's, same. Yeah, it's you're co-written. Right. It, it is the same. There's a new. There's a writer there's that a co-wrote writer to it. Yeah. With, but they did bring Michael. Uh, what's his name back? Michael Hirsch. Yeah. He, yeah so he, right. he did yeah. write this. The William Nicholson that uh, was throwing me about that. Yeah, he did write the story, and the director's the same. And well, Jeffrey Rush comes Jeffrey back. Jeffrey Rush, Kate Blanchett, they both reprise their roles. Um. But I don't think Joseph Fiennes comes back. Well, everybody else is dead at this point. <laughs> There's not that many people that can come back. Characters. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to stop because I don't want to lambast this story, this this movie, because uh, if I were to zero in on Christopher Eccleston's performance, well, let's talk about that really, yeah, really what that's we why do, we're here. Um, I think for what he was given, he managed it well. Uh, it was very interesting to see him in a, in a drastically different role from the Doctor. And I think for what he had to work with, I thought he did a really good job. So I, I did enjoy him. I did enjoy his performance if I didn't enjoy his character. I thoroughly enjoyed his performance, and I, I, I agree with you. It was, it was, he, every scene he was in, he did take command of. He, oh, yeah. he, he, he riveted me with... Being as dark and um, plotting, and just you know, even when they were just sitting around having dinner, and they would cut to him, and nothing was said, and then they would cut back. You knew that he was scheming to to, to get something out. So I was I was very enraptured with that kind of of, of, of dark villain heavy that, that that he's playing, until we get to the end, and he delivers his speech about before he signs the document that I'm doing this because this is what I believe in. And but he does it with some questioning because he's asking the yeah. uh, maiden that he lives with or that he's whatever he's doing with. <laughs> well, we see what he's doing. We with, see what but, he's doing. Yeah. Uh, but the, 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 the young maiden, that. the young maiden that is is his girlfriend, um, he does it with some questioning. He he is suddenly starting to doubt his motivations at that point, which I, I did appreciate. Yeah, I, I like that aspect of it too. Yeah, and, and then all of a sudden, this this dark brooding heavy just went. Whoosh, I went. Oh, don't play, don't play sympathy with me now, man. I just, <laughs> I, 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 my brain works very simply. I like people that you're the bad guy. I'm going to hate you. You're the good guy. I'm going to like, that's why I like Knight's Tale so much. It's very cut and dried. <laughs> these are the good guys. These are the bad guys. Okay, let's go. And I, I just, I, you know, don't get me wrong. I can appreciate a big, you know, complicated plot, but I, I just, I tend to like. This is who you're supposed to root for, and this is who you're not. And then when you pull the tables on me, my brain goes, "No, I don't. Yeah. Don't confuse me." <laughs> don't do and they they gave me just enough to make me start to question whether or not he actually believed in it, or if it, you know, did he feel as strongly about well, it? Well, that's just. And it. then the movie ends. They kind of swoop in and well, capture him, and it's like, oh well, okay. Yeah, I, I think there like there was a little more to that because I think that while he's doubting his motivations, he's suddenly he's suddenly starting to maybe sympathize a little bit with Elizabeth, and maybe. Maybe the idea that she has herself to him. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, not even so much, but that 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 some of the things that she is doing is better for England. And ultimately, he, while he don't, I don't think he ever would ever side with her. I think he realizes he's he's starting to side with what's best for England. And it's, ultimately, it's like he, even though she's his adversary, he admires her. Yeah. Well. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll give you that. I don't think I wouldn't go as far as say admiration, but maybe uh, respect. No, nah, not even respect. Anyway, what I what I like is the ambu, ambu, ambiguity. ambiguity. <laughs> Big words tonight. <laughs> ambu, yeah, ambiguity, ambiguity of the, the 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 maiden <laughs> as to whether she set him up because yeah, uh, Jeffrey Gresh's character gets that paper very quickly and easily and uh eccleston's character actually looks to her as almost a was i betrayed before he's hauled yeah. off and so i kind of like that where we we really think that she's completely 100 percent in league with him and then it leaves that uh 
you doubting a little bit that maybe she was either blackmailed or or or, or paid off to to deliver the papers to uh, Russia's character. So. I, I will take uh, issue with the uh, the description that uh, uh, watching uh, the queen become uh, a, a ruthless uh, what what is what was it. Uh, chess player or something that whatever the term oh. was that you because she really didn't do anything jeffrey rush did all the work i don't know if i'd go that far ah, jeffrey rush was the heavy lifter well, here and i loved it it's it's interesting to see that she's manipulated from both sides because she's yeah. she's at first being manipulated by attenborough's character cunning strategist Cun- and yeah, that one cunning strategies uh, she's being manipulated by attenborough's character at first and when she finally starts to see the folly of those ways, she's already being manipulated by Russia's character. And so I kind of like how they had this balance of, of struggle. And you you almost sympathize completely with Russia's character because he seems to be doing what's best in her best interest. And it's almost like he's leading her, but I can see where they're saying that she becomes the strategist because by the end, even when she decides to become the Virgin Queen, and she's finally at a point where she's making her own decisions. Even Jeffrey Rush's character has that sense of doubt as, do I even have control here anymore at the end when she comes yeah. out? And so I think that that lends us to believe that that uh, Elizabeth was uh, did become maybe a cunning strategist at the at the at towards the end. I, I and that totally based on being as... based on being manipulated by both of these characters, she grows in the meantime. Yeah, I, I totally saw her growth as a character in her political machinations throughout the entire film. She she because well, she because she initially their political machinations. Well, yeah, she, she I, was, I agree with Sean. She's kind of just a follower up until the very end, until she finally well, makes up her mind what needs yeah, to happen. Yeah, but 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 she yeah, she's she, even pushed by Rush there at the end, near, she, towards the end. Well, and of she, what to do? She's doing what Richard Attenborough's character is telling her to do and it, when that fails then she kind of stands up and says no I'm going to do this instead and that's when Jeffrey Rush's character comes in and kind of supports that decision and helps guide her in that Well direction. he's been guiding that though all he's along been while he's been laying the yeah. seeds well, while Attenborough's character has been the, the key for that I think is w- when, when he leaves to go um, parlay with, uh, with Spain, Spain. <laughs> and No no or France, France, France. Yeah. The, 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 the warrior queen, the warrior queen up there uh, in Scotland, and, and he goes to, to talk to her, and then the next scene, she's dead, and the, they're, what, what have you have to you have to issue a statement, you have to do this. She goes, well, I didn't have anything to do with it, and I believe her. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think that was just totally rush with a oh yeah, absolutely, you know, lossing her head a a, a, a a target a window of opportunity and took it. And it happened to be in the best interest of the crown, so yeah, we're going to do that. <laughs> right, right. And so, because I like again, you speak of ambiguity. They never really. Maybe she was up behind that. I don't think so. I think that was all Jeffrey Rush's character. No, I th- I think it was all all him. Yeah. Um, so you're right. It's not until the very end that she kind of you know based on their conversation about what happens to me now. Do I you know get carved in stone or something? And he's like, well, they haven't found anything to believe in since the Virgin Mary. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I so I, I also sort of like the contrast between her and her sister Mary, and how Mary was very, she was going insane there at the very end, and part oh, of that yeah. may have been her cancer, and part of that may have been just mental illness, but I like how the weight of the crown. They, they sort of leave you with the idea that maybe the weight of the position or the weight of the crown is part of the reason why Mary went insane and why Elizabeth is on that cusp of possibly becoming insane as well because of the, uh, of, of the way that they end the, the story. So that was woven nicely as well. So I could pick another thing out. I think I liked the, the contrast between the two and how they become very similar by the end, or at least a shade of similarity at the end. I wish Eccleston had been in it more. Yeah, I, I would. I would have liked. If, well, if, certainly if in it more than Sylvester, uh, Sylvester was. was in Dracula. <laughs> if, if we're we flushing got a out, benchmark. even Colin probably. <laughs> if we're flushing out the, 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 the linear part of the story with this, I think there's a lot that you could have built up his character, and I, I think I was. You could have almost done the sympathetic bit a little sooner, and then fleshed out his character. Well, more. I think I was wanting a Tim no, Curry as I, Cardinal Richelieu in the Three Musketeers, and I didn't quite get that. Uh, you well, know, but, yeah. Um, you know, 
I wanted to die in the true villain, and I thought that's where we were going with it until the sympathetic part. But just we still didn't get to see enough of him, I feel, to really... Because even the scene where he should have been the most upset when she's winning over the the, the bishops. And again, Wassinger's got people locked in the basement. <laughs> Five votes in the basement. How yeah. many did it win by? Five. And then they pull out <laughs> and they show how many people are standing there. Actually, there were six in the room because yeah. they would have won out had they not... Uh, but you know when 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 she's holding court basically and 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 actually d- for, despite the blasphemy despite the, the how dare you she's winning these yeah, people she wins over, them over yeah. yeah and they cut to Eccleston and you see his reaction that he's like well I, he asks he says where is so and so yeah like I can't believe this is going down this way and so you're on the one hand you're kind of cheering a little bit because like yeah get him Queen Elizabeth and on the other hand you're like. Oh, poor Eccleston's not going to have, you know, your, your plot's falling apart. But he, he still seemed, not only he, he was thunderstruck by it, but he was also angry at her. But he was also just on the just on the cusp of that begrudging respect. Not quite there. Not quite wanting to admit that... She may have won, but she did a decent job doing so. Yeah. And, and so, even that scene was just like... But, but, I, could, I could have used a lot more of him. <laughs> it was just his performance was so great that you could see all of that on his face. Yeah, he could have easily just played it very getting angry and mad and fuming, but he had so much depth to his character in that in just that no, scene alone. No, he didn't have depth to his character, but he had depth to his performance. Well, yeah, that's what yeah, I, yeah, I would agree with that. He could have gone out and you know lightsaber to control panel, but <laughs> he kept it inside. He didn't go all emo. <laughs> it, it is interesting to watch how through all the machinations, how much of a, a uh, razor's edge that you're on in those positions and that oh, one yeah. false move one way or the other can, can seal your fate. And it's also interesting to see, despite the fact that they accused Elizabeth of heresy and they she, she never spoke straight out in favor of Protestants, she still had to skirt that line where at any time anyone could have, you know, really hammered at home that, you know, she needs to be she needs to be exiled or she needs to die or she needs to do something. But they always realize that they always respect the lineage and they respect the fact that they're they're so steeped in the traditions of the the, the throne that realizing once Mary's gone and she has no heir that Elizabeth immediately, despite whether you despise her or completely disagree with her, she becomes the next queen. And there's well, there, that's why the they whole adhere to that. And I think that's of the impressive. film is then trying to convict her of treason to right. kill her before right. she can take over the role. Right. Um, so I'm going to show my ignorance now. This is the, the setup of the the English church, the Church of England. Yes, this is, was this, this was, is what this, this was. This is what. This is when the breaking with the Roman Catholic. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's the and, and the impression is that uh, Rome was not going to have that, and the Pope signed the the letters saying that anyone that that she he basically accused her of heresy for doing so. But that was that was the beginnings. That was the beginnings of the church. I think uh, I think maybe it was George later that really solidified the thing, solidified the. Church of England as a uh, divinity, they, they divinity didn't have, they, they within didn't the have a name of it yet. So no, it no. And in fact, yeah. they, it was clever the way they said that. Maybe that England should have her own church. It was like they reversed it a little <laughs> bit to, to kind of nod to the fact that this isn't necessarily the establishment of the Church of England, but this is where we're headed. Yeah. <laughs> the foundation for it. It makes you want to go learn even more about. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of turned to Sarah after lineages. the fact, in addition to saying now I kind of want to watch Golden Age, but I thought it would be interesting to somehow chronologically, like true chronologically, sit down and watch the entire monarchy <laughs> of the films they've done. The B- so, because so, I always get confused of okay, so. Who followed Elizabeth, et cetera, et cetera. And so seeing that in order. The BBC and- did a series, and I can't no. remember if it's on. Yeah. I can't remember <laughs> if it's. 
Crown? Or, or was it even the BBC? Some One of the networks over there did a series called, uh, I want to say, I'm going to have this wrong and somebody will correct me, I'm sure, but I, it's like the Throne of England or the, the Crowns of England or something like that. And I think I've even seen it on either Netflix or Acorn. And they, it, it, uh, I, I read a little bit about it. It does a really good job of taking each era of uh, rulership and mm-hmm. breaking it down and giving you a good uh, brief history of oh. England over a course of like Maybe five, that'd be a good way to five do it, stories. Huh? And so that might be a place to go. I, I, I've been intrigued by it, meaning to watch it myself, but I haven't gotten that far. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, still any doctor I, I mean, I guess I've maybe talked in favor of it a little more than maybe I've been able to piece some of my things in there that I did like about it. But I just, uh, if if I think structurally it could have been done better. I'd agree with but that. But Eccleston yeah, did a good that. job. And I, I, I'm glad we picked this one. I'm glad we were nudged towards this one because I think a, a listener actually. Yeah, Robert. Robert suggested we, yeah. that we uh, go this route. So. I think that was a. It, it probably was the the best representation. You say Eccles is not in it uh, much, but I think he was in it a lot more than 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 uh, enough to give him to to make this a credible sure source. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, because even I mean like Troughton, we didn't. I don't think we got near as much Troughton as we got Eccles did in this one as we did in the Sinbad film that we watched. Um, I wonder if somewhere there's a. a like a counter of how much actual screen time. I tried looking it up. <laughs> yeah. For future reference. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so I we tried looking it up. Dracula. Yeah. yeah. Even before that, just trying to, so we could figure out, I think it was with Trout and I was trying to figure out, okay, so how much is he in this? We should be all other right other from ones. here on out because we've got <laughs> actors that are, well, either were established or have since established since. So on the last three we're doing, so. So for Matt Smith, we're going to watch uh, Terminator Genesis, right? No, we're not watching Terminator Genesis. <laughs> I'd like to do the one that he watched. Uh, no, don't make me watch Womb. Ago. Womb. Yeah, I'd like to do that. How about one. Christopher and his kind? Anything but Womb. No, no, Womb. We're going to do Womb for that one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies? Who's next? Tenet's next. Right? Tenet's, Tenet's next. next. Had we decided what we were doing for Tenet? Um, you had. What we did on our vacation? I thought we were doing Casanova. Oh, no, what we did on our vacation I'd, was I'd be the fine one. with no, watching Casanova. That's right. No, but. what we did on our vacation we thought would be nice and manageable and, 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 a, and, a, and a lighter role than Casanova even. So, yeah. Yeah. That and Casanova dropped off Netflix. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little harder to get I a own a copy of, of it if you, if you right, would so like to we'll watch do, it. All right, so we'll do vacation. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what was it called again? I think it's called What We Did on Our Vacation. Oh, okay. I have to go double check. Are you sure it's not What We Did on Our Holiday? What We Did on Our Holiday, maybe. <laughs> Is he playing an American or is he playing a Brit? Because if he's playing a Brit, it's probably holiday. If it's playing an American, it's probably vacation. It's what we did something. What are we going to come up on the schedule, Sean? Well, can we got that eventually. Yeah. <laughs> not not next, next week. Month. <laughs> what we did on our holiday. What we did on our holiday. Okay. He must be playing a Brit. Of course it's a holiday. <laughs> um, it would be interesting. We haven't had a, a Brit playing an American as the doctors in any of these yet. They've all been playing British characters. Well, we don't know what nationality Troughton's Trout character was. was. Yeah, he was, he, was he was some Brit. Yeah, he was Greek. He was Greek, but he was an American. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes, so they haven't been playing Brits, but yes, they have not been playing Americans I'm either. You are both certain. <laughs> Colin's ba- Colin Baker's character was not a, a Brit. That's true. That's true. <laughs> in, uh, but in but he still had his accent. I think Trouton's the only one that didn't have their normal accent. I'm fairly certain. Well, uh, wasn't uh, uh, Sylvester McCoy was not playing a Brit? Well, uh, <laughs> Wurzel Grummage was not well, a Brit. Either. All right, my my argument is <laughs> he was a scarecrow. Dissolving. A British scarecrow. A British scarecrow. He was a British scarecrow. Yeah, a British scarecrow. Okay. I'll he, give may, you that he, he may not be a I'll subject of the one. crown, but I'll <laughs> give you that one. If, if if scarecrows have nationalities, I I, I would argue that he was a uh, <laughs> he was not a, an American scarecrow. Tom Baker totally played an American Sherlock Holmes, though. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a fun recap of what we watched. <laughs> yeah. Did we miss we, any? We think we've got on all of them. Uh, oh, so uh, Peter, all, Peter, all creatures Peter, great and small. Peter yeah. Davison was an American vet. What no, was his name? Uh, oh. Peter Davison's? Yeah, what was his um, character's name in that? I can't Tristan. Tristan, yeah. yeah. I couldn't remember. 
Which there, right there tells you he was English. <laughs> what are we going to come up on the schedule? Uh, coming up this week on the schedule for Friday Night Who, uh, we're finishing out April with John Pertwee and the Ambassadors of Death, parts one through four. So some funky Pertwee for you. And then uh, we uh, will be reviewing some uh, books next week, some uh, some shorts, Lethbridge Stewart shorts in particular. Uh, we got In His Kiss by Sue Hampton, The Enfolded Time by Andy Frank Mallon, and The Black Eggs of Khufu by Tom Dexter. And uh, then we're going to tackle uh, unit dating. Kind of all is part of that, and uh, possibly have a special. We may guest. have a special guest next week for uh, unit dating, so we're gonna we're gonna work that out a little bit and uh, got see some if we logistics to handle. Get that uh, yeah. scheduled. I like that word, logistics. It's a good word. Uh, the next week we finish off Ambassadors of Death with parts four through seven, or I didn't correct that five through seven, uh, and then uh, we will be reviewing The Stone Rose by Jacqueline Rayner, which is the April selection of the Traveling the Vortex Book Club. Um, so you've still got a little bit of time left to finish that one up. Don't be like me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> blowing right through it. Um, yeah, well, you thought we were reviewing it next week. Because I thought we were reviewing it this week. That's why you were blowing it. Yeah, next week. And then... Um, next podcast. The next podcast. Uh, and then uh, uh, kind of a bigger one. We're going to be doing uh, Galaxy 4 uh, for, for Friday Night Who. Um, and if you uh, have not yet... Uh, you might want to pick up your copy of the special edition of the Aztecs, as there is a uh, reconstruction of Galaxy 4 in the special features of that one, including the, the, the missing episode or that they found. And that's the version we'll be doing for Friday Night And that is the version we'll be doing for Friday Night Who, although we will be reviewing that plus the, uh, the loose cannons and uh, possibly the book and, and some other things, kind of trying to do an all-inclusive for our lost-in-time uh, uh, goodies. Uh, and then I'll do one more just because it was a change from what was originally scheduled. The following week on 520 will be Asylum of the Daleks because the three of us will be uh, fairly busy that weekend at uh, Planet Comic Con here in Kansas City. Uh, we're there in Kansas City. We're not in Kansas City, but we're close. Um, we're almost part of the Kansas City metro area. <laughs> our hometown crowd. And uh, so uh, we, we will be there for that and uh, fun things uh, on the docket there, including... Um, Arthur Darville and Jenna Coleman. Jenna Coleman, thank you. Blank. Just Oswin kept Oswin. Oswin. Like, That's <laughs> not even the character's name, really. It's Asylum of the Daleks stuck in there. Uh, Jenna Coleman, both at uh, Planet Comic Con this year. So not too late to buy tickets for that. Nope. All right. Well, and uh, if you haven't got your copy of the Aztecs yet, you can buy that through the Amazon store. That'll give you a couple of weeks to get it uh, if you want to do that. Go to our website on the right hand side of the page. We do have some sponsor links there. And uh, is there a portion, simple way to order it through Amazon, Glenn? A portion of those should well, just click on the Amazon <laughs> link. And, click on the Amazon and, yeah, link on our website. Click, you click can go to that. our website and click on that link. On the right hand side of the page, as I was just saying, um, <laughs> our sponsors there and. Uh, a little bit of those proceeds go back into this uh, podcast. And then uh, also, if you are uh, not already a supporter of us on Patreon, please consider being a supporter. Um, 100% of those proceeds go into this podcast to keep us uh, churning these out from week to week and uh, doing fun things and bringing special things and uh, maybe some YouTube videos eventually. Uh, and uh, we also have the spread shirt shop there and you can buy Traveling the Vortex merchandise and I think every week I've promised to put new stuff up there and I still haven't but we I do have some stuff in the works uh, it's just taking a little more a little more time to design it than I thought because we they keep throwing other uh, jobs at me ahead of that so uh, I have to set that work aside and do things like um, logos for other things <laughs> and uh, um, can we get an Eccleson one that says all I wanted to do was overthrow the Queen of England and all I got was this lousy t-shirt no. <laughs> He could be headless. <laughs> uh, unless there's anything else that you guys can think of. I want to throw a big shout-out to Ben, who I don't know if you guys saw, but he uh, placed a, apparently a very sizable order oh, yes. Through, yes, our, through, our, through our Amazon uh, link using that little button on the, on the right-hand side of the page. Oh, a little button. It's a big one. It's a big using banner. that big button <laughs> on the right-hand side of the page. So thank you for that, Ben. Yep. Yeah. All right. If that's going to do it for this week, until next week, I'm Glenn. I'm Sean. I'm Keith. Cheers. Good night, everybody. Be seeing you. You have been listening to Traveling the Vortex. Doctor Who and all of its associated programs are owned and trademarked by the BBC. No infringement is intended or implied.